Welcome back to this channel where we are trying to fix a solid white color characteristic that breeds true in our guppies. In this video, I will be updating y'all on the progress of Cross 5 which has produced some of our first white colored guppies. I will also go over some of the genes that I believe are interacting together to produce this color. This video might get a little complicated, but I hope that the information will come across clear. If you are new here, my name is Ivan. I started this channel to document the progress of breeding an initial group of five guppies that didn't share many physical characteristics. Of the five, I only had one that expressed the solid white phenotype. He was also my only male and we named him Gandalf. We then set a goal to see if we can fix Gandalf's color trait by only using this group of guppies. We started by crossing him to all the original females. We then continued to backcross Gandalf to his female offspring. We are currently in the middle of this backcross series. If you haven't seen these videos, I highly encourage you to do so. They lay the foundation of how some of our genes are inherited and the evidence to support what genotype our guppies have. Crosses 3 and 5 will be the most relevant for this video. In the last Cross 5 video, we introduced Gandalf to six different females from Cross 3. They produced several batches of fry and I began separating some male offspring that started to show some coloration. I continued separating more males and we are up to a total of 35 now. I also counted about 45 females from this brood. This makes it a total of 80 guppies with a 44 to 56% split between males and females respectively. As I mentioned earlier, our color genetics in this cross will get a little complicated and there is a chance that what I think is going on is wrong. So to make things clearer. I'll first present the genes that I personally think are responsible for the visible colors and how they are interacting with each other. I will then talk about these genes in the context of our cross five males before moving on to the females. Afterwards, I will discuss some other possibilities instead of what I personally think is happening. In our case, I think there are three to four genes that are responsible for making a guppy white. Gandalf has a blonde based body color and so do all the offspring in crosses 3 and 5. It is debatable if this gene is absolutely necessary for a white guppy. I don't know if we can get a gray based white colored guppy, but we should find out soon in some of our other back crosses. Although interesting, I won't spend too much time on this gene because all the guppies in this video are homozygous for it, meaning that all our guppies are blonde based and the possibility of a gray based offspring showing up is zero. The next two genes that I think are necessary are the Magenta and the Storzbach genes. This seems to be the consensus after I sifted through different resources from Alan Bias, Stan D. Young, Philip Shattuck, several different forum sites, and Glenn from a recent video he was in with Nick from the Keeping Fish Simple channel. Glenn has quite the collection of shrimp and guppies and is very knowledgeable when it comes to breeding. I linked that video in the description. Go to the 816 marker where he talks about white guppies. So let's discuss the magenta gene first. In the gene reference table by Alan Bias, he records magenta as an autosomal dominant gene that controls the proliferation of red color pigment and iridophores in either sex converts yellow color pigment cells to red, though metal gold may remain, concentrates black melanophores, finish reduction. This is also consistent with what Philip Shattuck says in his Guppy Color Genetics book. However, there is still something that confuses me. When I was surfing Alan's website, he lists magenta as an incompletely dominant gene, contradicting other places where he says it's an autosomal dominant gene. This is the only place that I saw it say this, and it's most likely a mistake or typo. So moving forward, I will treat magenta as an autosomal dominant gene for now. Interestingly, it seems that this gene gives a guppy more red colored pigment cells by both converting the yellow cells to red ones and spreading the red cells around. Additionally, the magenta gene gives the guppy a more iridescent gene by influencing iridophores. Looking at a guppy that has the magenta gene, 
It actually does look like it has a magenta undertone like the name of the gene suggests. It's rather hard to capture it on camera though. This explains why Gandalf's offspring in crosses 1 through 4 predominantly had red tails. Let's revisit cross 3 for a second and use a Punnett square to demonstrate how this gene was inherited in that brood. I will represent the dominant magenta gene as the uppercase letter M. It is safe to say that Gandalf is homozygous for this gene, so meaning he is carrying two dominant alleles for magenta. We can represent this with two uppercase letter M's. Granted, we can't tell if he's actually uppercase M and lowercase M at the moment. We can assume that female 3 did not carry the magenta gene at all, and we can represent her with two lowercase letter M's. Filling in the rest of the Punnett square tells us that 100% of the offspring are heterozygous for magenta. Therefore, all the offspring will physically express the magenta phenotype. This is exactly what happened, and I encourage you to watch the video of cross 3 if you haven't yet. Because we saw this result, it also confirms that Gandalf is homozygous for the magenta gene. If he was heterozygous, we would have seen two different phenotypes in the offspring of cross 3. All right. Let's shift our attention to the Storzbach gene. Alan Bias lists this gene as an autosomal recessive gene in his gene reference table. He describes it as a blue iridophore gene, removal of red and yellow color pigments in body, but not finnage. Individuals with the yellow gold cast result from addition of metal gold, originated out of Vienna emerald green double sword. In conjunction with Stan's website and Philip's book, the most prominent effect of this gene is giving a guppy a metallic, iridescent look on the body. It's interesting that for a guppy to express white color, it must first have the magenta gene that spreads red color around to only have it removed by the Storzbach gene. What's left behind is the enhanced iridophores from both genes. I would like to stress that the gene only interacts with the body pigments and not the fins. I will represent this recessive gene as the lowercase letter s. Gandalf is homozygous for this trait, and it's safe to assume that female 3 did not carry this gene at all. She is represented by both uppercase letter S's. Filling in the Punnett square for cross 3 tells us that all the offspring are heterozygous for this trait. This also means that none of the offspring will physically express Storzbach because it is masked by the opposing dominant gene. The last gene is European Blau. I discussed this gene in detail in part 1 of the cross 5 series. It is also autosomal recessive and represented by the lowercase letter r. All our cross 3 offspring are heterozygous for it and represented genetically as uppercase r and lowercase r. In our case this gene is debatable if it is involved in making a guppy white. However, I believe that it does and hopefully I might convince you of it. Allen lists this gene as homozygous removal of red and yellow in body, reduced red present in finnage, ectopic melanophores removed, Basal melanophores reduced, snake skin pattern degrades, reflection reduced. So like Storzbach, this gene targets red and yellow pigments and removes them from the body and reduces the red presence in the fins. This gene additionally removes black pigmentation. Different from the Storzbach gene, European Blau doesn't seem to enhance iridophores. So let's put all this together. To demonstrate what I think is happening, let's start graphically using a blonde based guppy. To go from here to a white guppy, we need to have the magenta gene that increases the overall red pigment. Now that the red pigment is increased, it first needs to be targeted by the Storzbach gene. This makes the body more iridescent while removing the targeted red and yellow pigments. Lastly, we need to address the red pigments that largely remain in the tail. This is where the European Blau gene comes in and wipes away the rest of the lingering red cells. Because this involves three genes, keeping track becomes complicated, especially because we can have any combination of these genes expressing or not. Let's look at the females from cross 3 that I used to back cross to Gandalf for cross 5. Using the Punnett square analysis we did from our three genes, the genotype of our cross 3 offspring in terms of magenta, Storzbach, and European Blau is uppercase M, lowercase m, uppercase S, lowercase s, uppercase r, and lowercase r, respectively. Again, 
I'll refer you to the part one of cross five video for the European Blau determination. Because we now know the genotype of the females we used for cross five, we can use a Punnett square to determine the genotype of our cross five offspring. I am not ready to do a Punnett square that has three separate genes just yet. This would be a square that has 64 spaces that we would need to fill in. But we are lucky because the magenta gene is dominant and we can't tell if a guppy is heterozygous or homozygous for it. Let's do a single gene Punnett square for magenta between Gandalf and a female from cross three to demonstrate this. Gandalf is homozygous or both uppercase letter M's and our female is heterozygous. So uppercase M and lowercase M. Filling in the Punnett square gives us a 50% split between offspring that are homozygous and heterozygous for magenta. However, they will all physically look the same and therefore will all interact with Storzbach and European Blau in the same way. This means that for the time being, we can ignore the magenta gene in our genotype of our cross three females. All their offspring will have it. With only two genes to consider now, our lives are a little easier. Next, we need to consider all the combinations or pairings of alleles our cross three females can give. I went into much more detail on how to do this in my last video on crosses eight and nine. So I will just start listing the gene pairings here. Our first combination is capital S capital R followed by capital S lowercase r, then lowercase r capital R, and finally lowercase s and lowercase r. We can now put these combinations into their appropriate spot on the Punnett square. Because our male is homozygous recessive for both genes, all four of his different pairings are identical lowercase s and lowercase r. The Punnett square can therefore just be a column and not lose any information. However, I personally prefer to use the whole Punnett square even though there are a lot of repeats. We can now carefully start filling in all the squares in the Punnett square by combining the traits from each parent. I'll go ahead and do that now. We have four different combinations that are lined up as their own rows. The first row is uppercase S, lowercase S, uppercase R, and lowercase R. In combination with the magenta gene that they all have, this group of guppies will look exactly like the cross three offspring. The second row is uppercase S, lowercase S, and both lowercase R. This group of guppies will express the European Blau gene, but not the Storzbach. I will represent it as just a lighter shade of yellow without any red because the European Blau influences both the body and some finish. The whole guppy will look whiter. Our third row is both lowercase s and uppercase r and lowercase r. This group of guppies is expressing the Storzbach gene, but not the European Blau. I will represent it like the first row, but reduce the red of the body. As a result, the body should be whiter, but the tail remains red. Our last row is both lowercase s's and lowercase r's. And this is when both the Storzbach and the European Blau genes are expressed. This group of guppies should in fact be the all white phenotype that we are after. This is great. The Punnett square tells us that we have a 25% chance of expecting each of the four different combinations. One of which is the white phenotype that we are after. Let's see if this is actually the case in our cross five offspring. Right away, we can see that we have both red and white guppies. Taking a closer look, we do see two different white types of guppies. I went ahead and separated them into a small holding container. The first group is the all white phenotype. They have highly iridescent scales with no visible red color pigments. They might have just a shade of yellow in the fins, but that is it. Our other group of white guppies look more translucent. The difference here is the lack of the Storzbach gene expression. They also have more visible yellow. The most apparent difference is the iridescence on their backs due to the Storzbach gene. The presence of iridescence on the back is something that I use to differentiate the red colored siblings. The red siblings are not expressing the European Blau like their white counterparts. The first group I am showing does not have the Storzbach gene. Again, determined if they had iridescent backs. 
Depending on light conditions, these guys are sometimes a little tricky to separate otherwise. These males look like their uncles from cross three. The red guppies with the Storzbach gene are actually quite striking. One is practically pink. To make this more visible, I placed him in a tank together with one of his uncles and a non storzbach carrying sibling. Look at that color. He is clearly very distinct compared to the others. So here are the numbers. In this brood of 35 males, 11 don't express either gene, 12 express just the European Blau, 4 express just Storzbach, and 8 express both. This makes it a 31.4, 34.3, 11.4, and 22.9% split in the male group, respectively. I still think some of the males are a little too young to fully show the Storzbach gene, and over time might shift from one group to the other. We will revisit this in an update video. Let's shift gears and look at the females. Finding differences in the female group is a little more challenging. I honestly haven't come up with a good method of separating them because the differences are subtle. They have different body tones for the base body color, but it fades the moment I stress them out to try and catch them. I will come back to this and see if different lighting can help. If you remember, the lighter tone was what hinted that a blau gene could be at play. So, I think we will be able to tell if a female has the European blau gene, but not if she has the Storzbach gene. At least not that I could tell right now. Hopefully, in the next video, I could come up with a surefire way to split these females according to their phenotypes. Thinking about the next set of crosses in the future, I will likely be picking one of the lighter females. Currently, without a recognizable marker for the Storzbach gene, picking our next breeders from this brood will be a bit challenging. Best case scenario is we get lucky and pick a female that is homozygous for Storzbach. Worst case scenario is we pick a heterozygous female and her batch of fry will split between Storzbach expressions. But we will cross that bridge when we get there. I do have a few females that have irregular shaped spines that I will not breed in the future. All right, now to talk about how I could be wrong. One potential issue could be that European Blau might not be involved at all. The lighter colored female offspring from cross five might instead be females expressing the Storzbach gene. On the male side, I might be splitting hairs looking for four different phenotypes when there are actually just two. Just the red males without Storzbach and the white males with Storzbach. The other more transparent group of guppies might just need some time to mature and color up. This is plausible. But the issue here is that I do have those red-tailed males that have highly iridescent bodies that are distinctly different from the males of cross three who should share the same genotype. One way to explain this is an argument suggesting that my females from cross three are heterozygous for Storzbach. However, if that were the case, then I would have had two different phenotypes in cross three, and that wasn't what we saw. This is why I still think that there are four different male phenotypes in this group. Okay, so how can we resolve this issue if European Blau is potentially not involved? Well, if you remember, we decided to consider magenta as an autosomal dominant gene, and we are justified in doing so because almost all the sources said that this is how it behaves. However, Alan Bias did list magenta as an incompletely dominant gene in one of his blogs. So what does this mean? Well, put simply, we should be able to physically distinguish between heterozygous and homozygous magenta carrying guppies. Therefore, we can no longer ignore magenta like we did. Taking this into account together with the absence of European Blau, the expected number of four different phenotypes is restored. But I have trouble assigning the genotypes to the phenotypes that we are seeing. If the lighter colored guppies without any red are the ones expressing Storzbach, then I don't know how to account for the almost pink guppies that clearly look like they are expressing Storzbach. Perhaps the homozygous magenta gene might have that effect. However, then we'd have to figure out the genotype of the lighter yellow translucent guppies because otherwise, a heterozygous magenta expression still has remaining red pigments whereas our guppies here don't. 
I don't know how to further assign the genotypes of these two genes without conflicting with everyone else. That's why I think that it's likely that a third gene is involved, like European Blau, and that magenta is indeed an autosomal dominant gene. Time will tell with subsequent crossings. I'd be curious to know what you think or if you came across something similar. Let me know in the comments. Okay, if you made it this far, bravo. As I mentioned earlier, this was a complicated one, and hopefully I made it clear enough to follow along. But the exciting take home message is that we are much closer to our goal of fixing an all white guppy line. To further reach this goal, I'm thinking about what my next set of crosses will be. Currently, I have five lines which I want to consolidate into three. This means that I will likely start collapsing lines together, so keep a lookout for those future videos. I will make this Cross 5 series a three-parter and circle back with an update when all the guppies have matured to full color. I still have crosses 6 through 9 to update you all on and here is a little preview of the progress for each of them. They will all have their own individual videos and Cross 7 will be the focus of the next one. So if this is something that interests you, please consider sticking around. I'll see you next time.